Hey guys, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com. Our initial unboxing video of the Sony Ericsson X10 Mini gave you a very brief introduction to the custom software and the custom skin that Sony has had to overlay on the Android operating system on this device. In this video, we're going to actually give you a better in-depth look at that software and kind of show you what they've done to make it more manageable for the user to allow you to kind of navigate through the operating system and actually use the device itself. So let's go ahead and just jump right into that one. All right, and we are back and I want to take a little time to kind of give you a tour of the X10 Mini because Sony really has decided to customize the Android operating system here by more or less putting their own skin, which is what we see on a lot of different phones. However, this skin was designed with the form factor of this device in mind. Now, it is Android 1.6, as I've said in the unboxing video. Basically, what we have here are the four corners. The top corner is going to be your messaging menu. The top right will be your music. The bottom left will be your phone and your recent calls, your call history, that sort of thing. In the bottom right are your contacts list now, but however, what you can do is you can actually slide this arrow up, which will bring you to your main menu. So more or less from here, you can actually go through and select your different applications, such as your browser, your camera. You can, as you can see, I have some emails waiting for me right there. We can then also continue to scroll over to the right or to the left, let's say, to also see more of the apps and the icons themselves. Now you can install apps on this device like any other Android phone. As you see there, it'll keep going. Now if I go into my settings here, I will actually show you the about phone here. So as you see here, the firmware version is 1.6 and it gives you the build, that sort of thing. So once again, I mean, the X10 Mini, it, it really does have a customized version of the Android OS to really fit this device. If we go back to the home screen, I will show you actually the messaging application. So if we go into here, type up a new message, typically you would pick a recipient. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to actually pick the keyboard slot. Now this is where this device is different from many touchscreen, if not all touchscreen and of Android devices that we've seen this far. It does not have a QWERTY keyboard. As you see here, it uses the old style that we were used to once upon a time on our flip phones. In fact, this phone very much reminds me of a flip phone. It's almost like just the screen portion of one of the old style flip phones put into a touchscreen form. But as you see here, it does give you the old style for the texting. Once again, it is designed with one hand operation in mind. And I have to say, to be very honest, the one handed texting on this device is very easy. I can actually just use my thumb. I won't pick it up and block the camera, but I can actually use my thumb and just pick letters. And it's very simple. I mean, granted, it's not as fast as a QWERTY keyboard would typically be, but it is very simple to actually, you know, write out a quick sentence or a quick text message here and there. When it comes to writing an email, a full-length email, I would say, probably not going to be the best format because it will take you quite a while. Um, but, you know, simple Facebook updates, Twitter updates, that sort of thing. I've had no issues whatsoever. Now, what we're going to do is going to go back to our home screen. Now, we also have the phone dialer icon in the bottom left, which will bring you to your dial pad. So let's go ahead and press that real quick. As you see here, we have the typical dial pad, just like any other phone. If I press this other icon here, that will give me my recent call history, but I won't really delve into that right now. But again, very simple to use, very clean interface. Going back to the home screen, the top right will have our music player, which honestly is very impressive. It's a very simple music player, but the speaker quality, the music quality is just phenomenal for the size of this phone. I mean, once again, I'm pinching this phone and it's very small. Uh, and it, it really puts out a lot of sound, which I will go over more in depth in my hardware overview. Going back to the home screen, we have, of course, last but not least, the contacts list in the bottom right corner. I won't jump into that right now because that's quite extensive and it shares people's information. Now, as I previously mentioned, you can actually swipe up here to access the typical grid menu system. However, they've also incorporated widgets, which allow you to actually swipe left and right to access different screens to see your widgets. Real surprise here, guys, There's this is actually 20 screens that you can actually swipe through. Now, granted, you are typically limited to one widget per screen, but I've actually done 20 pages before it's told me that I cannot do any more. As you can see, I'm repeating a lot of them because I do not have 20 different widgets to show you, but it actually will, in fact, do 20 different screens here. And it's still running pretty quickly, even with a few of them being Google Latitude and that sort of thing. But I would say it's definitely not... There we go. It's not holding the device back too much at all. So 
I mean, in reality, that's going to allow you to quickly access many of the key apps or the key widgets you're going to use on a daily basis without limitation at all. So in this part one of our software overview of the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Mini, we've gone ahead and show you the custom skin that Sony has overlaid on top of the Android operating system to allow for easy one-handed operation and navigation through the small screen, as you can see here. In our next video, we're going to go into more depth of the hardware. And then following the hardware overview, we're also going to go into more depth of some of the applications on this device itself, including a browser test and looking at some of the social networking aspects, as well as some of the gaming applications. So as always, please give us a thumbs up, leave us your comments, and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, everyone.